because it's sunny here. It, where I'm from, it's 40 below. And here, it's not 40 below. The sun shines lots and lots, and it's beautiful, it's warm. And I want to say this about the Oceanfront Walk. It's probably the last street on the North American continent on the Oceanfront Walk that you can sing and play. It's the ve last vestige of the free spirit, sort of, a hippie spirit, you know? morning, I listen to a radio, I watch in my TV set, don't say much you know, I said hey, watch me, what happened, hey, what's going down, hey, what's really happening, in the streets, the homeless can be found. It was created after Venice, Italy, there's Venice Canals. There used to be 29 miles of Venice Canals. There's only three canals left, Venice Canals. And it was, it was fashioned after the one in Italy. But Venice became a very, it, this place is very eclectic. I came here uh, some 25, 30 years ago. I, it was strange for me to see so many people. It scared the shit out of me, it scared me. But it was still wonderful because I got to play not this guitar, but a guitar. This guitar I've had for 25 years, maybe a little longer, 30. I met a, a, a saxophone player called Mike Forbes, and I lived in the backyard of, in a little truck for two years. And he said to me, Peter, are you still capable of playing? I said, hell yeah, man, I love to play. He said, well then, let's get a bass guitar. So I, I bought myself a bass guitar, which I still have, 25, it's about 25, 30 years old. And I became a bass player here in Los Angeles. I shaved my head bald, put on plastic ears, and wore spandex. <laughs> California is strange in itself, because 20 miles away is Hollywood. People give their souls to be, what would you do to have your face as big as one of these buildings? You know, what would you do? You give up your life. I tell, I tell women, don't come out here to be a porn star. Take your child, go back to Ohio, go back to Cleveland, go back to wherever you're from. Live with your mother, take your child. Get out of LA or you'll get eaten alive. It's a freaky place. stirring, you need it, uh, uh, it's soulful. I have weird stories to tell you. People say, hey man, you're great. You sing good, you play good. This is what my son says to me. He goes, dad, you know, you write good, you sing good. How come you're not a rock star? I said, Haley, Haley Lincoln Demian is his name. I said, son, for every rock star, there's 20 million that aren't. I'm one of the 20 million that aren't. Now, God knows in America, I have, there must be another couple million in England, who knows, yeah, all over the world, you know. So, you're adored if you're a rock star, but if you're just a guy guy with a guitar in LA, you're a bum, so. But I still love to play. Makes me feel good, makes, makes other people feel good sometimes. Most of our fans are like six and under. <laughs> the kids start dancing and then their parents stop because they're like, whoa, my kid is chilling out because they see a cello, you know? And you're just like, yeah. I've given little kids, you know, my shaker and he's giving them crystals and stuff and they're just like, whoa. That's one of the things that bring me here. You see all kinds of people. Venice Beach is a wonderful place to be. 
Everybody here seems to be smiling most of the time. Charles goes in the alley. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, I'm a Watch by. this. Oh, well, me, I sleep in my 69 Valley. Lord, that gets me by. That's all right. That's all right. They ain't gonna cry. Don't wanna die. I'm gonna stay dry. Tell you why. I am from San Diego. LA is way more fun. San Diego is kind of depending on if you're an artist. If you're not, yeah, then you kind of might be able to fit in. But if you're an artist, you won't fit in over there. It's not an art town. Okay. LA is more of an art town where you can actually survive and enjoy. I would say survive. I'd say you can actually just be an artist. San Diego is too uptight. Way too 90210. Tell you why. Tell you why. It's the only spot you can see ladies that look like models. You can't go anywhere else to see that. I would say it's an open air insane asylum where very bright people have come to stay here because there's still freedom of speech, freedom of expression, and uh, you can even go a little bit further than they allow you to go in other places in society. So this is my motto. This was my original house, the yellow one. When you see me in the internet, you'll see this big yellow Malibu Barbie house, but it got destroyed. I only have the base of it left, but I put another one on top. Well, it all has meaning, look. Let's say that we give you a home. You're not paying rent anymore. But then a hurricane comes and destroys your home, we can help you rebuild, see? There's no reason why human beings should be homeless. There's no reason why everybody shouldn't have a base from which to work. And I'm advocating that everybody in the world should have a home by now, that we should end landlordship that way we end the feudal system and we can all work for what we deserve, not work for some landlord every time. It is time that human beings got smart enough to finance each other without the need of financial institutions. They can just simply share with one another until everybody is provided for. I was raised and educated here since the age of 13. 14 and then uh, I went to Cal State Long Beach and became a bilingual teacher. I was studying art first but I saw it as too competitive so now I'm doing this weird art that some people do but I don't think anybody's doing it to the extent that I do it. Even though we're all human beings, we're all the same, you are being over-regulated in many places, and it shouldn't be like that. We should just kind of regulate one another by being nice to one another, you know? Even though I go around yelling and screaming and stuff, I can see your underwear! It's only to shock people into realizing, you know, there are other realities that we could be living on this earth. So I think the basic teaching for any great philosopher would be help one another and you will do a lot better on this life. You know, whether you go to heaven or hell or whatever. We don't know, nobody knows. So that's what, that's the message. Thank you so much, ma'am. God bless you. Just like that, the donations come in. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. And uh, we're very honored to be of service in the city of Venice. Hey, my name is Anthony Perez, and you're here in Venice Beach, California, where we're feeding the homeless with one penny donation. I am Anthony Perez and the founder of Send Me a Penny, Venice Beach, California. Every single weekend, we feed close to 1,500 meals that come out of this food tent, and this is a food ministry where we help people with food, clothing, counseling, 
and other crisis services. So this is a great opportunity for us to give back. Some of these kids, if you'll notice, they're from all over the world. And what, what helps us is that we feed the kids that are anywhere from five years old on up to uh, preteens, youngsters, and veterans, families that are homeless in Venice. I started this about uh, six years ago, feeding one guy. And this one guy happened to be a homeless guy who found my BlackBerry phone. And when he returned my, I called my phone, and when he returned my phone, I thought it was the neatest thing in the world. And so what I did is I gave him a job, uh, water in my neighbor's yard. And one day he didn't show up to work. And what happened that one day is I came to look for him, and I asked him, I go, hey, David, how come you didn't come to work? He says, I'm hungry. I'm not going to work if I'm hungry. And so what I did is I put $50 at the nearest taco stand, hot dog stand, and I said, my name's Anthony. This guy works for me. Would you be so kind as to make this guy a breakfast burrito every morning so he'd come to work? And that's how it started. But well, one day on a Saturday, I came to visit the guy, and I got him a couple of packs of hot dogs, and I watched him as I gave him these hot dogs. He said, thank you. And I watched him from a distance feed other people. And all of a sudden, he had a line of people, and he had about six, seven people lined up. And I go, hey, Dave, what are you doing? He goes, these are my friends, and they're hungry. How many friends you got? He goes, I got a lot of friends. I said, are they all homeless? And he said, yeah. I go, well, how many homeless people on Venice Beach? And he goes, there's too many to count. Well, that was six years ago, and now we feed everybody on this boardwalk. Not only do we feed homeless people, but we feed everybody that's hungry on the boardwalk that cannot afford a $6 hot dog. Somebody somewhere, somebody must get. You know, you know that old expression, misery loves company. Well, that's this can be company. You know, so. There's a singer in the alley. I like that there is a lot of people walking by, so it's like a rolling stage. Uh, I like that there is a lot of beautiful birds flying around. There's a lot of beauty all around you. There's people having fun. It's uh, everything's here. You know that human beings should be all about. It's a little paradise on earth. Venice Beach, it's, it's the most beautiful place in the world. To me, when you see beautiful faces and, and everything that you can get involved in, from skating to art to you know the homeless population, a lot of people come to Venice, and for some reason, they feel the need to help people. So a lot of people help people in Venice, and that's what I'm about. And I've run across the same kind of uh, people when we, uh, thank you so much just like that, they help us out, you know? And so they see the problems and they get involved. When you come to Venice, you just want to be a part of it. Very awesome. Somebody somewhere, somebody must care. It's an amazing place, <laughs> amazing definitely, because all the cultures, all the people, uh, even the homeless people, and, and just knowing everyone and just being, it's sort of like a family here. You know, once once you get to know the Hanna people, once you get to know the, the all the other artists on the boardwalk, and it's just it's just a family out here, and everyone knows you, and and it's just a fabulous place, man. It's a fabulous place. But Venice is where it's at, okay? I, I've been I've been to more interesting beaches in different ways, but economically speaking, there's no other place like Venice Beach. A wonderful place, a wonderful, a wonderful paradise of individual spirits. You guys don't know who I really am, so I'm gonna sing you a song about who I really am, okay? I'm in the reader eight, I am, in the reader eight, I am, I am. I got married to the widow next door. She's been married seven times before, and everyone was in a read. She wouldn't cop a Willie or Sam. I'm an eight old man, I'm in a read. In the reader eight, I am. The second verse, the same as the first, so why in the heck should I sing it? All right.